Hey, everybody. Happy New Year. Uh, it's Anne Margaret with Raise the Vibration. Thank you so much for joining me. We're just going to wait for a couple minutes uh, to get started, but just be sure that you have everything that you need for the session today. Today's session is different because it's New Year's. Uh, we're going to do a, a year long. It is really projecting a year, but it's an hour long session all about letting go of 2019 and setting very specific intentions for 2020. So just to get yourself ready and prepared, uh, be sure to have at least two pieces of paper that are loose. So just be loose. It's really great if you can get two different colored pieces of paper. Hi, Levi. Uh, so grab two different colors of pieces of paper and we'll get started really soon. If you don't have colored paper, just grab white paper. That's fine. Something to write with and just a quiet place for you to be as well uh, so that you're not disturbed. Okay, excellent. We're just, those of you just joining, we're just waiting for about one or two minutes till we officially start our, our hour long session today, all on New Year's and letting go of 2019. So, uh, and planting intentions for 2020. So go ahead and grab two pieces of paper. Judy, oh my gosh, Heather, hi guys. Uh, just grab a couple pieces of paper that you can have and we'll get started in just a couple minutes, okay? And if you want, those of you who are just joining in the meantime, to get, we're going to be focusing on what we're surrendering or what we're releasing from 2019 first. So as you are, uh, if you're already with your paper and your pen and you want to just share something in the notes uh, and in the comments, you can go ahead and just put something in there, maybe it's one word, maybe it's a phrase, something that you're surrendering from this past year, 2019, and so we can make some space. So go ahead and grab your materials, everything that you need, and we'll get started in just a moment. And if you wanna write in those comments anything, or if you wanna get started, just start writing down on one of the pieces of paper, words or events or situations or struggles, whatever you are releasing from 2019. Okay, and we'll get started in one minute. Hi guys, oh, so great to see all your faces on Facebook. I'm on Facebook Live and Instagram Live, so I'm seeing both of you here. All right, beautiful. Okay, uh, so, we let's get started so if you're not in a comfortable position to sit or uh, undisturbed be sure that you have closed yourself off in your own room or at least you know that you're not going to be disturbed turning your phone off and let's just find a comfortable place to sit and be together and start we'll just start with a little meditation okay so go ahead and close your eyes And just get settled, connecting with your breath on this first day of 2020. And I want you to go back to January of 2019. Maybe even exactly one year ago today on the very first day of last year. What were you doing? Who were you with? And now, very slowly, as you continue to breathe, knowing that you're right here right now, of course, but reflecting on the year one month at a time. And you don't have to keep your eyes closed for this entire meditation. I invite you, when you have something come up that you want to jot down, on one of the papers that just keep one paper, the one 2019, and then we'll have the other one be 2020. As you move through and you have things come up to the surface of things in 2019 that you want to release, go ahead and just jot it down. And I'll do this with you. So something from 2019, going back to January, and maybe you just need some time to breathe and, and take it in. What was going on in January? What was going on in February? And very slowly, maybe you're jumping around a little bit and something in July stands out or something in October or even last week you know, stands out. Go ahead and jot it down. Just place it down on your paper. 
And for those of you just joining us on Facebook or Instagram, what you're doing is just reflecting on this past year and what are the things that are jumping out that you want to connect. Thank you guys so much for joining. Yes, hi everybody. What are the things you're wanting to surrender? What are the things that stand out for you? Think about your health. What were the resolutions last year? Think about what happened in your family. Anything that stands out. Something challenging, something that you had to overcome last year. And just making a very rough list going through February, through March, as you moved into spring last year. What were some of the things that you were dealing with? What were you facing last year? And sometimes as we remember, we reflect on these things, they, they bubble up like, they bubble up like sensations in the body and sometimes we don't know exactly what they are or where they're from, but they're in there somewhere. So if you're feeling some sensations in the body or some emotions also, you can write that down or just breathe into it and feel what you're feeling as you reflect on this past year. Into April and May, into full spring, so interesting to look back and reflect on this past year and we're writing down those of you just joining us on facebook or instagram you're just writing down from this last year things that stand out for you of the challenging aspects of this past year what you had to overcome what you might still be struggling with think about your work what you put your efforts into, what you're building. Maybe the romantic relationship in your life, if you have one, or if you don't, things that happened last year around that area in your life. Around your creativity, you're just writing down different things that are standing out for you. Good. Into June, as you moved into summer, July. What did you face? It's so beautiful. I'm actually in Colorado right now and I'm hearing all the winds outside outside right now. So it feels like those winds of change are coming into this very first day of the new year. Hi, Terry. So keep writing down. Those of you who are just joining, we're writing down things from 2019 that were challenging, that were things in our life we had to overcome. Hurdles, growth spurts, things we might still be facing. moving into summertime into august as you move into fall into september october keep jotting down these things from 2019 if you're just joining us no worries you haven't missed much just starting by kind of downloading out of the brain the things in 2019 that were really challenging a lot of you have shared with me that 2019 was a very tough year so what we're doing, just breathing, closing the eyes, feeling in the body, or maybe it's just popping right into your brain. What are those things that you had to overcome last year? And just jot them down. Just keep jotting them down. It's better to jot them down. I know it seems like an extra step, but 
to get it out of the brain and onto paper helps to disempower and disrupt any old patterning. So that's what we're starting with. Good. And into October, into November, and even last month, reflecting on what has happened. Who have you had to be this last year? Who, who has been influential in your life that has really been challenging for you? Looking at all of this past year and what you have overcome. Just very first thing. Take about another 20 seconds to finish up, just jotting some things down from your year. It takes time, it takes commitment, it takes courage to reflect like this and to carve out the time to do this. So I acknowledge all of you who are with me right now and watching this and participating. Consciously making space for 2020. And just begin to finish that up now. Great, great, great. Great work, everybody. So as we start a new year, we so badly want this fresh start to be more of like a magical wand that we kind of wave and different areas in our life from our health, our career, our romantic relationship, our, uh, our creativity, our self-expression, our connection with God, with divine energy, our growth, our self-growth and our self-knowledge just to magically overnight turn around. There's so many teachers out there too that teach, all you have to do is these three steps, all you have to do is this quick course and, and your life will be fixed. And I don't know about you, but it's, it's really misleading. When we make profound changes in our life that are rewiring our brains, that are restructuring the patterns in our life, it takes repetition, it takes practice, it takes consistency. And that is the very thing that keeps people from achieving their goals or achieving greatness or causing dramatic shifts in their life is the follow through. So it's wonderful to make these resolutions and to recognize what we're making space, what we're letting go of from the year, the prior year. But then how do we create consistency and follow through? Just like you don't wake up as a musician. I know I didn't wake up overnight and learn how to play uh, Chopin overnight. It takes practice. It takes consistency. And also when we're learning new patterning, which is what our resolutions are, these new intentions in our life, we must first be very patient with ourselves, very patient so that as we begin to learn the new patterns, maybe it's going to the gym, say, and we're going to go and take yoga once a week, and we're going to go do rebounding once a week, or we're putting in a new uh, schedule for ourselves and how we relate to our physical health. It's very easy after a week where we don't necessarily hit our mark, or even the first week of the year, many of us give up on our resolutions before one week is over, that it's very easy to beat ourselves up. But compassion is so critical in moving into this year, into these new patterns, so that we can be patient as we mess up. I know when I was learning the scales, when I was playing the piano as a, as a young girl, I had to be patient with myself and learn, have my brain speak to my thumb, lift the thumb and drop, and then the second and then the middle finger, and then the thumb crosses over or underneath. And how to, to speed that up over time took a lot of practice, a lot of consistency, and a lot of patience. So these things that we've just written down, and if you're just joining us, don't worry, we just wrote down just to start some of the things that were really challenging about 2019. All right. And these ritualistic practices, like even what you're doing with me right now, are so important for the human condition. 
I grew up Catholic and we would go to mass every Sunday and I would go to mass and I would, I would really love the singing and I would love the message in the homily, but I, and I would love the messages of, of, from the, taken from the Bible. And I, I was learning every week. And then I just didn't really get the whole ritual aspect of it, the stand up, sit down, kneel and all of this. And, and then I went through an interfaith seminary to, for two years, studying all the world's religion and the importance of ritual. And I really don't think it was until then when I really understood fully the importance of these rituals in our life and how critical they are. Like when we turn sweet 16 and we have a celebration, a bar, a bat mitzvah, uh, the coming into this life and we have a celebration, a naming ceremony or a baptism or a dedication of a child, or when we go through a, a wedding ceremony, think about all of those critical, pivotal moments in the human life. And sometimes we, I don't know about you, but I, I used to really think, what's the point of all these rituals? They seem so they seem so mindless and they seem just like, uh, you know, mundane. And then if we look at the ritual and the, and the importance of the ritual, it really helps us recognize and take a pause to acknowledge something different happening in our lives. It was so neat last night. Uh, I hope you all had wonderful New Year's Eve last night. Anthony and I uh, spent about an hour or so with my parents just saying hello. And then we went to dinner and then we took a yoga class from 10.30 to midnight in downtown Littleton, Colorado. And at the end of the class, there was no countdown. It was a wonderful class, by the way. It was so much fun. It was live music. It was beautiful. And at the end of that class, I think Anthony and I spoke afterwards. We were like waiting for that countdown that you get every year, like 10, 9, 8. And and you know that feeling that you get when you hear a countdown it's it's like something's about to begin and then i don't know about you but always after that countdown what do we say happy new year it is a declaration it is a a, a sharing of an emotion attached with what's going on happy new year and then what happens usually right after that we hear that old lang syne song kick in and when we hear that old lang syne song kick in most of us don't even know what it means <laughs> we don't know the origin of it but it just it touches our heart in a very nostalgic way and so when we we hear that and we go through that ritual something happens we know that the old year has just finished and the new year has just begun and even though it seems silly or it may even seem trite to some of you when we didn't hear that last night, something had, was missing. It was so odd. It was so interesting. And this morning when we woke up, Anthony said to me, uh, he's such an incredible partner and teaches me all the time. And I, we could feel like something was off. And he said, you know, I just, I really missed not having that countdown last night and not having that moment of celebration. So think about those times in your life, but maybe you didn't, you didn't mark it with something, some sort of ritual. Maybe something that you went through in 2019 wasn't properly grieved, wasn't properly acknowledged, wasn't properly celebrated, wasn't properly processed. And uh, what was really cool about Anthony is he, this morning he said this, and then he said, hold on, we need to do something. And he got his, you know, music ready and and then he just took me in his arms and he said okay 10 9 and I was like of course I went to like eye roll and like you know oh come on it was it's over now who cares don't we do that all the time too we're like it's too late now it's too late we can't do this now and we're standing in our bathroom and he's just doing this countdown and I'm doing this countdown with him and we get to one and as we're getting to one like the three two one i feel all these butterflies in my stomach and all of this very visceral uh excitement within me as we're going down this countdown we're not at a party we're not with other people it's not even new year's eve anymore it's in it's in the morning of new year's day but yet he said, let's just do this countdown to mark what we missed last night. And as we're going three, two, one, and then we both said happy New Year's. And I just, I just started crying. There was just tears that just started moving out my eyes, down my face. And it was just this beautiful moment. 
<laughs> and then he, he's so funny. Those of you who know my husband know he's hilarious. And then he pressed the play button. And guess what he had? Old Lang Syne playing, of course. And it was just a very special moment. And then he he had it on Spotify. Those of you guys who know Spotify, you know, like you can just put in a song and then it'll play like every version of that song that's ever been recorded. So that's what started happening. And then like an hour later, we're like listening to like the 10th version of all things. I'm like, okay, I think that's enough. But the point here, and those of you who are just joining, I'm just talking about this morning and the importance of ritual in our life what started happening and what we woke up with because we didn't go through that ritual last night like we normally do and like we have for years we started feeling like there was something that was unresolved and when you think about those things that haven't been properly grieved that haven't been properly celebrated that haven't been properly acknowledged uh, by you you don't even have to have anybody else acknowledge it with you i'm not saying that because then that might set you up for grave disappointment but things that have not had that proper ritual to them might be interfering with what we're doing in the year ahead, the space that we're making for the year ahead. So in the moment of, of this really precious moment with my husband in our bathroom this morning, I started realizing, wow, like I, I just don't think I properly grieved what I went through in 2019, even though there's been a lot of tears, it's been a very tough year for me too. So many of you have shared with me how challenging it's been. It's so critical that we mark these transitions together if we can, but at least by ourselves. It's so critical. So in looking at what you wrote down, if you're just joining us, all we did so far was we just wrote down things in 2019 that have been challenging for us. So in 2019, just look at that list and look at all those things that you went through. Like your soul experienced challenging transitions this year. You're not human if you didn't, or you're not diving deep enough to find out what was really challenging. It could have been traffic this year. You just moved to LA and you're experiencing the traffic for the first time. Or I know some friends of mine just relocated from California to New York. Shout out to Christian and Michael dealing with city life again like what are the things that you you had transitioned because if we don't acknowledge what we've gone through we cannot absorb the lessons and the blessings that come from that adversity i know you guys know what i'm talking about with that when we pause for a second and just say oh my gosh that was that was tough but i did it i'm still here i'm still alive i'm still breathing i'm still in the game then we can say okay well what did i learn from that person who really threw me a curveball this year or left or died or hurt me or some sort of injustice something that happened or maybe something that you did that you're not proud of something that you did that you did this year where you feel like you let yourself down or you did your best, but you still failed, uh, those kind of things. Look at that paper and then I want you to flip it over to the other side. And I want you just to jot down here on the other side of that paper. And I did this a couple days ago in preparation for today being with you. I found this so, so valuable. So on the other side of that paper, write down the successes. So it might be just a flip version of what you wrote on the other side, but things like, you know, I made it through this. I, I was kind even though I wanted to kill that person, <laughs> or I was brave in the face of this, or and just start writing down those things from this last year. And then if you finish, and we're just going to take a couple of minutes here to do that, so just keep jotting them down. Go ahead. Keep, you can get started. And at, if you run out of things to be proud of, just look a little deeper. Be a little more generous with yourself. Jot a couple more things down. Think about the wins that you did have, even if those things kind of went to the wayside. Those of you just joining us, we're writing things down about what we're proud of from 2019. We already looked at what was really challenging. So if you're with us, just jot a couple things down to catch up with us. And Katie, thanks so much for joining. Congratulations. She just became a new mama. 
So just writing down a few things here, things you're proud of. Katie can write down, I became a mama in 2019. I know Judy, Judy's daughter got engaged. I know Heather joined me for the chakra workshop at the beginning of last year and had so many breakthroughs through all of her courage and work there. Those of you joining us, like, no, really be generous with yourself. What did you accomplish? Okay, and just, just keep jotting them down, even though I'm going to move on. If something else comes to mind, just jot it down. Great, and then we're going to go even further, even further, because we did just end a decade. And now we're from the 10s into the 20s. And as we move into the 20s and we're feeling a lot of this new energy, not only of a new year, but a new decade, and so much also is energetically shifting right now, as we know, and we see a lot of things around us changing very drastically, I want you to jot down some things from this last decade. Think back to 2010. Doesn't that seem like a lifetime ago and yet only yesterday? Think about 2010. What are the things that you did in this last decade? Just like bullet points. Uh, you know, this is what I did with my health. This is what I did in partnership. This is a vacation I went on that was so fun with my kids. This is a course that I took where I learned so much. Uh, and you might be really shocked about how many things you did accomplish in this last decade. Just jot them down, bullet point them, keep going. And every time you write something down, practice feeling that joyful rush of acknowledgement, that joyful rush of the, the ritual of acknowledging the successes from the past decade. What happened? Where did you go? Where did you travel? What new places did you see? What accomplishments did you, did you really meet this last decade? There's Beth. Hi, Beth. I know so many of you that are joining right now. I'm so blown away even just seeing your beautiful names of all the accomplishments on Broadway, becoming a new mom, learning so much. I know I'm seeing some of you, I won't name you, of course, but have really met addiction and overcome it, have been courageous enough to be more transparent with who you are in this world. That's something to acknowledge, write it down, because if it lives in our minds, you know what happens with those habitual patterns in our mental uh, capacity to just forget it all. So take it out of your brain, put it on paper. What did you accomplish? And I know it's easy just to go, oh yeah, 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 I did this, 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 and I got other things to do now. Take the time right now, take the time right now to acknowledge it. The extraordinary things, those of you who are just joining us, deep, deep, hey girl, uh, Anthony, hey, uh, all the things that you've accomplished in the last decade, if we don't acknowledge those things, we don't fully own them, we don't fully embrace them, we don't get to fully stand on that success, like standing on the shoulders of what we've done before so that we can reach even higher in 2020. So just grab that piece of paper if you're just joining us, dive right in, write down, what are some of the major accomplishments that stand out? We started with this last year, now we've moved on to the last decade. Have generosity with yourself here, practice generosity. What extraordinary things did you have to go through as a human? And if it's difficult to acknowledge yourself, which sometimes it really is, feel as though, you're in a situation where you have somebody else and you're not looking at you, you're looking at somebody else's acknowledgement. Separate yourself as we can do in the mind to be the observer rather than the one experiencing. Good, just take about another 20 seconds. We're just writing down, acknowledging some of the key. I, when I did this a few days ago, I was so blown away. Those key things that you did over the last decade. It's shocking how much we can accomplish in a decade. There's a great quote by Tony Robbins that says, most of us overestimate what we can do in six months, but underestimate what we can do in a decade. Or it's overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate what we can do in a decade. 
So when we're making these resolutions, and we're going to start focusing on 2020 in just a bit, but what we're doing is clearing out some space so that we can acknowledge, we can embrace, we can embody all of those successes and those wins. And the failures are never failures outright unless we haven't learned something. So as we move through the ritual practice of acknowledgement and celebrating or grieving, I know when we finally acknowledge that this morning, I shared this story earlier on with those who, who were with me from the beginning of this today, that Anthony and I acknowledged that countdown to New Year's this morning because we missed it last night. And just feeling that ritualistic acknowledgement started to bring up and conjure unexpressed emotions of of joy, of relief, of celebration, of, of um, devastation and disappointment. So all of those things, allow them to truly come up as you're writing these down. Feel the emotions that you're experiencing. Good. And if you have something to share, you want to connect and, and be interactive, please do. Please jot something down in the comments. And I'll definitely address those questions. If you're courageous, I know it's sometimes scary to put things out online. I know like doing these lives, it's very vulnerable for me to get in front of a camera live for an hour for whomever can see this wherever they are in the world. Ah! But at the same time, like if we don't have that courage to truly be seen, we don't have the freedom to be us and screw up because we're human guys, right? We can't always be perfect. I know the beautiful Beth Maloney who graduated from the same college that I did and is now on Broadway. She's been done so many amazing shows. I saw, I saw her in I think Fun Home and done so many amazing shows. Broadway performers, I know Alanis performed last night with the cast of Jagged Little Pill that we saw when we were in New York last time. It is such a rush to do something live because you're truly seen and it takes such mastery when you do it beautifully so i acknowledge all of those performers who are out there doing their thing and in front of other people those teachers who are brave enough to get in front of a classroom and be with their students so go ahead and finish up those acknowledgments if you haven't already good and if you're brave enough throw one in the comments if you are if not it's okay of something that you're acknowledging about yourself from this last year or this last decade. Okay, and now what I want you to do with that loose piece of paper, and if you've forgotten, you wrote in your journal, I know it's not fun to rip it out of your journal, but take it out of your journal, and I want you just to fold it in half, and I want you to fold it in half again. Okay, and just have that Place it between your hands, close your eyes, bring it up to your heart. And if you didn't do this with us and you haven't written anything down, you have a paper or anything like that, just place the hands in this mudra. It's called a prayer mudra. I know we see this praying in any sort of religion. It is a form of a mudra, of a, a reflection, an acknowledgement, or a devotional uh, mudra or hand position. But what it also does is helps us connect with bringing the left and right together, the masculine and the feminine, and then just a devotional connection with the heart as our thumbs are connected with the heart. Close your eyes. And even if you don't have a paper between your hands, go ahead and think about those challenges from 2019. Imagine that they're between your hands if you didn't have a chance to write them down with us and you're just joining us. Close your eyes and think about those things that you overcame in 2019 that you're proud of. Hi, Randy. Close your eyes and, and feel it for a moment, just the acknowledgement of yourself and everything from this prior year. We spent the whole last half hour reflecting on what are those things from 2019 that have been challenging. We feel the pain in our body. We feel the challenge. But also acknowledging the things that you overcame. Randy got married this year. What are, those, what are those pivotal moments in this last year? And then we also reflected on the last decade. Oh my God, all the things that happened in this last decade. So just for a moment, just bring it with a reverence and a gratitude to thank God, thank the universe, thank your partner, thank your enemies, the people who have challenged you, Thank the circumstances that were undesirable, that forced 
you to find out who you really could be and how you, the strength that you needed within you to overcome these things. Allow that breath of gratitude, true gratitude for those things in your life over the last year, or if you're working with the last decade, that provided those challenges for you to overcome. That strengthen you. We cannot grow stronger without adversity. Think about weight training. We need some sort of resistance in our life to be able to build those inner muscles, those mental, those emotional, those physical and spiritual muscles in our life. So as you're breathing here, just acknowledging with a reverence and a gratitude for those lessons and the overcoming of those obstacles in your life. And without opening your eyes, just let this be a magical one-on-one -on -one with you and you. Begin to tear the paper. Not because we're trying to get rid or push away what happened, but because we are releasing from the form that it was in, it's just transformation from one form to another, what we had in the last year, and owning it within, releasing it into year 2020 so that we can gain the benefit and the wisdom and the blessings and the growth and the strength and the resilience and the courage and the transparency from everything we've been through and just keep, keep ripping it up with that acknowledgement of gratitude and knowing it's complete, knowing it's over. Keep ripping. Make really teeny tiny pieces. They're going to make this teeny tiny confetti. It's going to be lots of fun. So keep ripping it up. Making space. Making space by acknowledging. Keep ripping. By acknowledging. Also embodying all those lessons from the prior year. Keep going. Keep those eyes closed so it can just between be between you and you. Thinking about with love, with positive intention with gratitude because you can not because it was fair not because it was just but because you are the one who can be the alchemist and transform how you relate to this last year and everything you went through keep going tiny 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 pieces if you need to open your eyes to see if you can rip them up again that's fine keep going and i want you to bring all of those pieces after you've ripped them all up bring them into your hands Bring them right up to your heart, right up to your heart. And just take another acknowledgement here. One moment. Thank you for all of the challenges I faced this year. Thank you for the blessings in my life, all of the angels, all the people who stepped up and helped me along the way, whether they were human or whether they weren't. All the things that unfolded. We know with 2020, we have clear insight, clear vision for looking back. And with this, you can either throw it up overhead or blow it and release it. <laughs> Good. I hope that was fun. All right. So open the eyes. We've now done a lot of work to release 2019. And I'd like to also pick a card from the archetype and the goddess deck because you know I work with that a lot. And I will put the images of this in the notes. Uh, so let's pick a card for 2019 and see what kind of wisdom it shares with us, okay? All right, here we go. Drum roll. Interesting. Got the virgin card. Do you see the virgin card? So the virgin archetype is uh, the light attribute is maintaining a symbolic purity of heart and spirit. And the shadow attribute is fear of intimate union. So the virgin archetype for this last year, what an interesting card. I'd say that when we work with the virgin archetype, and I know those of you who work with archetypes a lot, you who work with me a lot, either over video or in person as a student or one of my coaches, knows that these archetypes are so valuable when we work with them. They allow us insight into aspects of ourselves that we've either glorified or we've demonized, or aspects in others that we've glorified or demonized. So with this energy now, and I think that we might have also pulled this because we just released so much of 2019, but one of the shadow aspects of the Virgin is 
the resistance of communion, the resistance of union or intimacy. So what in your life this last year was something around that as well? Something to release control over so that you could grow more intimately with yourself or with another or with your work? Interesting card to pull today. And also what we went through in this last, this is also what I think that this card means, especially in my life, I know. In moving through what we went through in 2019, if we're able to acknowledge the blessings and if we're able to harness what we went through and, and learn from it, we can more fully return to that purity of heart and purity of spirit that is ours to move forward with. So cool card. Let's do one more archetype for 2019 and then we'll do a goddess card. Drum roll here. Second archetype card. Mentor. Mentor. All right, so let's read this. Light attribute, passing on wisdom and refining a student's character. I mean, this is something, a light attribute, as we're talking about. It's kind of a perfect card for 2019 as we're reflecting on what we've learned, how we've grown. And then the shadow attribute is the warning, right? It's the warning about the mentor archetype. Inability to allow the student to move on to the role of master, imparting false instruction. Okay, so not allowing, if we're not... If we're keeping ourselves small, and we're relating to our, our own journey in 2019 with this card, if we're relating to our own journey and we're not learning what we need to learn, but we're just looking to distraction, we're looking to other teachers to teach us, which is obviously a very important part of our life, but if we're not owning our own wise woman or wise men within us, then we can't fully step forward with the authority of this mentor archetype or the archetype of the master. We can't fully embody and own those lessons from this past year. So great, great, another card to remind us that what is the wisdom that we have gleaned in this last year? All right, and let's move on to goddess, goddess cards from 2019. And we'll also pick some for 2020 after we set our intentions. All right, there's a really beautiful, um, there's a really beautiful quote by, I think it's Jessica Char, around yoga. And he's one of the yoga masters and beautiful um, authors and, and teachers. And he said, yoga is 90% about waste removal, about letting go. Like, what are we letting go of? Uh, and when I first heard that quote, it reminded me of another quote that I don't know if it's actually truly credited towards them or just some beautiful mind that made this quote up and credited to Michelangelo, but when asked about the David, the David statue, one of the most beautiful, arguably one of the best statues ever created in the world, uh, Michelangelo, oh my gosh, I just saw a bald eagle outside of my window. No kidding, you guys, I'm so sorry. This is a live video, so I just saw a bald eagle fly right by my window. This is incredible. I'm, those of you who are live with me right now, I'm so psyched that you are here with me because that was extraordinary. I only for the first time, right? I only for the first time saw a bald eagle. Uh, oh my gosh, that was incredible. Um, in my adult license, I moved back to Colorado a few weeks ago on my way to New York. And wow, that, that was gorgeous. It was literally probably about 10 feet from my window just flying by. Amazing. Happy New Year, Kelly. So before we pick the goddess card, I have to acknowledge the significance of that bald eagle, you guys. The bald eagle and seeing this on New Year's Day, and, and those of you who are with me on this video, you're seeing it too, even though it's just through my eyes here, that that bald eagle represents a higher seeing place, a strength. It's the bird that flies higher than any other bird in the world, you guys, the bald eagle. It's so rare. It was also on the endangered species list. I don't even know if it's still on it, but it's a very rare sighting. We live on a lake out here, so we see a lot of bird sightings, but I just take that moment, that extraordinary moment, as such a, a beautiful gift to all of us uh, right now who are on this New Year's Day. I, I'm actually shocked. That was extraordinary. So just saw a bald eagle fly outside the window, like 10 feet away from my window. You guys have to come visit in Colorado, okay? All right, back to what we're doing. That was incredible. Uh, so just, that is, a, I, I believe also that the animal world and the bird world, the spirit world is so, yes, yeah, so beautiful, right? 
that these are messengers, they're teachers for us. I know in, in the Native American spirituality, which I grew up with very closely with growing up in Colorado, going to powwows, I was absolutely fascinated by Native American spirituality because it looked at the earth as the teacher, the rock people, they would call the rock people the mo the wisest because they'd been here the longest. And then they would talk about the fish people and the bird people and the, the four legged people, the animal people, and that we are the tree people and looking at trees and saying, how are you teaching us the plant people? And I think that this is such an extraordinary, even though it sounds a little silly or hokey for some of our Western minds who are so detached from the earth and the wisdom of that. When we think about it, what is the wisdom of, of water? And, and I have a, a very special reading to share with you before the end of our time here today. But from the Tao Te Ching, it's all about the wisdom of water, especially. And over time can carve rock or how, how um, we can learn from nature some of the most beautiful teachings in our human experience. So anyway, so that was a really beautiful gift, a bald eagle flying by. I, I've never seen one so close to me uh, that was out in the wild. That was incredible. Okay. Let's pull goddess card. So the goddess card, oh, this is great. <laughs> Mott, fairness. Uh, the situation will be handled in a fair and just manner. Think back to 2019. What in 2019? This is a wonderful card for me. I really appreciate seeing this myself, but what in your life you feel was unfair about this last year? Isn't that crazy how we get really upset about things that go on in our life? We're like, that wasn't just, or that wasn't fair, or why can't I get a break? Or we see these things because we're stuck in the victim archetype and not trusting in, <laughs> love you, Heather. Thank you so much for joining. We, we're, not, we're not trusting in the unfolding of our life. We're not trusting in the in the synchronicities and the balance of the universe. And if we look at nature, we had a whole beetle kill of so many trees in up in the mountains in Colorado. These mountains I would go up in these forests were all had to be leveled because of the beetle. And it was such a, a devastating time in Colorado because people would be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sad all these trees were gone. But what is it doing with re renewing the soil? What is it re doing with the death, bringing about a new life? So awesome card in reflection of 2019 fairness really surrendering that you need to be the justice or the judge arch archetype but trusting that all is unfolding beautifully cool card let's do one more goddess card whoop, for 2019 these are intuition cards so just ways to connect with our intuition ah beautiful abundantia prosperity yes the universe is pouring its abundance out to you. Be open to receiving. Be open to receiving. Oh, that's great. So it's just a reminder that you don't need to worry, that it's all unfolding, that if 2019 was more of a year of carving out within you a really challenging time, trust that the space that we're making and why we spent so much time on letting go of it is because we're making space for 2020. Cool. Let's switch now to focusing on 2020. So grab your other colored paper. I've chosen pink for the heart chakra to be connected with more love, more self-care, more heart-centered practices. But you can choose whatever color you want. And I just want you to take time right now with the space that we've created to jot down the intentions for 2020, okay? So just keep writing them down one at a time. Make a list. Good. And I just had a a note that says can relate. Oh, living in Lake District, UK. Oh, you're in the Lake District. Oh, it's one of my favorite places in the whole world. Just a, a comment that was made on my Instagram live that he can relate or she can relate. I'm not sure. Last night I was chatting about pheasants we often see we we see often to where we are holidaying in lake district uk wow i'm doing this release idea wonderful wonderful work oh the lake district i did some gill scrambling up waterfalls there oh what a beautiful place you are right now happy holidays and happy new year so we're writing down those those intentions for 2020 building in momentum building in excitement those of you who are just joining us Jot them down. What are those exciting resolutions and seeds you're planting around your physical health, 
around your mental health. Like what are those things that you're going to be practicing? Maybe you wake up every morning and the first thing before your feet hit the floor is you say, oh my God, thank God for one more day. What? Thank God for this, the lungs that are breathing right now and my heart that's beating right now. Good. Write those down. Maybe just a couple ideas. Don't overwhelm yourself. I know we can take on too much. And then when we take on too much, we lose the simplicity and then it's all out the window as we know. So what about your career or your personal relationship with your partner? Or if that's something you desire to manifest and attract in the coming year ahead, jot a couple of those things down for yourself. These are seeds that we're planting right now in the fertile soil of what we just transformed, what we just set on fire for 2019. One of the greatest gifts of forest fires is that it leaves a very fertile soil. Even though it causes devastation in its past, in its path, it creates a beautiful fertile soil. So what do we want to plant in that fertile soil now that we've released 2019? Jeremy, thanks for joining. Keep going. Write it down. Write it down in your career, in your self-expression, in your creativity, in your relationship with God or your universe or the universal energy of love, however you relate to that energy, your faith, your devotion, your trust, your surrender, your letting go of control, being in tension, but also letting go. And I just realized that when I got distracted by the bald eagle, I didn't finish the quote about Michelangelo when sculpting that David that, sorry to interrupt and kind of jump around, very feminine. So in looking at the Michelangelo, somebody asked, or at the David, they asked Michelangelo, how did you sculpt David? Like, how did you, how did you create this masterpiece from the stone? And he said, David was just in the stone. I carved away everything that wasn't David. This is the work that we're doing. This is the work that we're doing in letting go of everything that is not us or everything that's not serving us. Everything from 2019 and really standing on strongly standing and claiming the lessons and being grateful for the adversities and the blocks and the, uh, I'm so distracted. There's so many beautiful birds flying outside. The symbolism of truly getting our wings comes from the strength of moving through that adversity. The metamorphosis uh, uh, metaphor of the butterfly having to pry through the cocoon and break through the opening in the cocoon and in the moving through that adversity and prying through on its own, it gains the strength to fly. This is what we've done. We've gone through so much challenge, so much adversity, so much pain. Pain is one of our greatest teachers if we don't resist it or make it wrong or run from it. So if somebody comes by and sees that a butterfly is trying to escape from the cocoon and rips it open from it for, for the butterfly to emerge faster or more easily, you know the butterfly will never have the strength to fly. It's moving through the cocoon that it gains that strength. That's what we're doing. So keep writing down those intentions for 2020 and get excited. Feel the rush of the energy and that love and that excitement. Follow your excitement. Bashar, one of the great channels and the great teachers says, follow your excitement. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. Let's pick two archetype cards for this, for our intentions. You're going to keep this paper. You're not going to rip it up. You're going to have it be a reminder for you, a physical uh, manifestation of the heart's desires and what's been in the mind. All right. Yeah, let's do a drum roll for archetypes for 2020. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, it's been such a blessing to be with you. I used to do this in my yoga studio in New York City every New Year's Eve. So many of you who are here joining me now, join me for that. So now I share this with you. Uh, very technologically advanced over our lives. Okay, let's pick an archetype. 2020. Oh, beautiful. Child divine. Child divine. I was actually even studying this archetype in particular in the last week or so because I've been really feeling it. So I'm not surprised that it was pulled today. Child divine. All of us have the archetype of the child within us. We all have that archetype of the child. We all have the saboteur. We all have the victim and we all have the prostitute, the things that we sacrifice from our integrity and not being true to ourselves. So child divine here, 
the light attributes, innocence, purity, and redemption. Suggest a special connection with the divine. So it's cool. We pick the virgin card of what we are being prepared for. And now the child divine, a special connection with the divine. The shadow aspect of this child divine archetype card is an inability to defend oneself against negative forces. So as we move into this year ahead, this card, this archetype is going to remind us, write down child divine on your paper. So you can be reminded of that direct connection that you have with God, the creator, source, love, universal consciousness, that higher seeing place. However you relate to that, Allah, Buddha, anything that you connect with, all of the gods from Hindu that help us, they're like the archetypes that are in our lives too. So however you relate to it, it's a personal thing for you. But connection, direct connection and devotion and trust and that communion with that energy. That can be before you go to bed, saying a prayer, thank you so much for this day, thank you for my life, all of the challenges, all of the joys and everything in between done, go to bed, let it go. Something you can do each day that reminds you of this communion, critical for 2020. All right, let's do one more archetype for 2020. We're doing two of each today, because why not? All right, let's pick another archetype. Uh, interesting, right? One of the four main archetypes that we all have within us the victim, I just shared this with you. So victim archetype, the light attributes prevents you the victim is positive too. We have to remember it has a light attribute. Prevents you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others. This is a huge one. The shadow attribute, which we all are familiar with, playing the victim for positive feedback in the form of pity. Inability to maintain personal boundaries. So cool to get these two cards together for 2020. The victim archetype, write down victim, it will remind you of when you're slipping into that victim, like whenever we're talking about, oh, that person did this to me. The more we say that, the more we perpetuate the victimization of our own self. That thing, it's over. Or maybe it's keep going on and it's not fully resolved yet, but we keep re-victimizing ourselves by relating to it in that way. Does that make sense? Or we victimize others by withholding um, Forgiveness. We victimize ourselves from withholding forgiveness rather than letting them be human, forgiving and letting go. It's first and foremost for ourselves. So the victim archetype, awesome card to pull for 2020. Yay. All right. Let's go ahead and pull two goddess cards. And like I said, I'll put these cards, images of these cards so you can see them more clearly in the notes section on the Facebook page uh, live. So those of you on Instagram, I think I could do it on Instagram too. I'll do it on Instagram too. All right, let's pick two goddess cards for 2020. Let's feel a drum roll. Mm -mm -mm. And oof, this card, I actually got it recently myself. Can you see it? It is Eric Hura blossoming. So you are just getting started. So have patience with yourself in the process and do not give up. Okay, write that down. Blossoming, Era Cura. And let's do our other one since we're running out of time. Hang in there. Okay, our other one is Rhiannon. Ooh, that's cool. Sorceress. So this is your magical person who can manifest your clear intentions into reality. Remember this about yourselves, guys. This is so, so critical. All right, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cards. And to finish this off, and I put in the notes some, if you have specific resolutions linked to needing to get more quality sleep or wanting to do a cleanse or wanting more this or that in your life, I put a lot of notes in uh, the notes about that, links to different things I'd recommend. But I want to close off with this, and I just have one minute left to get it in here. So thank you guys all for joining me. Love and blessings to you guys in 2020. And I'm leaving you with the Tao Te Ching, one of my favorite books, uh, Lao Tzu, but at the translation is Stephen Mitchell. Okay, here we go. Some say that my teaching is nonsense. Others call it lofty, but impractical. But to those who have looked inside themselves, this nonsense makes perfect sense. And to those who put it into practice, 
This loftiness has roots that go deep. I have just three things to teach. Simplicity, patience, compassion. These three are your greatest treasures. Simple in actions and in thoughts, you return to the source of being. Patient with both friends and enemies, you accord with the way things are. Compassionate towards yourself, you reconcile all beings in the world. Love and blessings to all of you. Thank you so much for joining me. And Margaret was raised a vibration. And check out, I'm doing an eight-week chakra workshop starting January 23rd. Eight weeks on Thursday nights. Everything's in the link, okay? You guys, thank you so much for joining me. Also, and there's another link. We're doing Women's Circles now online. Super excited, starting January 24th. Love and blessings to you all. Have a beautiful beautiful 2020. Bye-bye.